The Suns just finished a disastrous season to the feet of the Minnesota Timberwolves. Props to the Wolves who knocked the Suns' teeth in and overmatched them in every facet of the game. But we'd be remiss not to look at the frightening state of the Suns franchise. The Suns, one of the highest paid teams in the league season, would best be described as weak and sloppy. It might sound harsh, but they were one of the softest and most mistake-prone teams in the entire NBA this year. After building a core that took the team to the finals in 2021, Matt Ishbia bought the Phoenix Suns and completely flipped it upside down to make it his own. He showed a willingness to spend as much money as possible and a desire to become one of the most hands-on and boldest owners in the entire league in an attempt to become the next Mark Cuban. He traded away valuable assets to acquire both Kevin Durant and Bradley Beal to build a big three alongside Devin Booker. By trading away all their draft picks and rostering three players with exorbitant salaries, the Suns went all in on this core. The fit seemed a little awkward since all three players play somewhat similar roles as elite isolation scorers, but there was no doubt that they had one of the most talented rosters in the league. In some ways, it was like the ultimate video game experiment, and fans were dying to see how it all played out. Therefore, they entered the season with sky-high expectations. Early on, the team struggled, but they were given the benefit of the doubt since they were just learning to play together in an ultra-competitive Western Conference. But as the season went on, it became more and more clear that the roster was fundamentally flawed. Despite being a playoff team, the Suns were nowhere near good enough to compete for a championship, they got swept in four games by a young, physical, and high-energy Wolves team that completely overwhelmed them in all facets of the game. The Wolves, the best defensive team in the league, were a horrible first-round matchup for the Suns. Though the Suns flashed tons of talent and were one of the better shooting teams in the league, they didn't make anything easy for themselves. Their game plan was to exploit mismatches and score in isolation. The fact that they had the league's fifth-best field goal percentage with that strategy is immensely impressive, especially considering they took the second-most mid-range jump shots in the league. But ISO scoring is just too one-dimensional to win in the NBA in this day and age. The Suns' lack of cohesion and depth were exposed all season long. They didn't make anything easy for themselves. They were one of the most turnover-prone teams all year long and really weren't outstanding in any category outside of their mid-range scoring abilities. Throughout the season, the Suns' opponents outscored them in points in the paint, second-chance points, points off turnovers, and fast break points. These stats, amongst many others, are proof that the Suns never made the small plays, often made by role players that separate the best teams in the league. Kevin Durant, though his numbers are still amazing, is aging, and he doesn't play a particularly physical brand of basketball compared to some of the younger athletes in the league anymore. And now, with their lack of cap flexibility and empty cupboard of draft picks, it's going to be incredibly difficult to make the changes necessary to contend with the elite teams in the league. At this point, it'd be surprising if Frank Vogel wasn't fired and if the team didn't bring in a replacement to try and help the Suns retool and strengthen some of their weaknesses. But the truth is, the type of inconsistency, weakness, and sloppiness they showed all season long leaves a lot of doubt that they could improve. Even in the most critical games against the Wolves, they seemed to be out of sync and showed poor body language and desperation. We never want to judge a team based on things like body language and desperation because we understand that all teams want to win the championship, but it seems fair to speculate that their somewhat passive approach and lack of physicality would take a lot to overcome. With so many superstars in the room, it's doubtful that a new coach will be able to change the culture that seems to be in place. So the question now is, how do the Suns fix this mess? The future is shrouded in doubt. The easy answer might be to blow it all up, start fresh. But that's not an option for the Suns right now. They're all in on this core, for better or worse. So the path forward requires creative solutions. They need role players who can contribute on both ends, versatile defenders who can switch assignments and plug the holes in their perimeter defense, a guy like Jaden McDaniels on the Wolves or Aaron Gordon on Denver is exactly what they need right now. But those guys are few and far between in the league, and if they were available, the Suns wouldn't have the assets or cap space to acquire them. Grayson Allen, who was missed against the Wolves, does provide them with a 3 and D presence, but he's far from the defensive difference maker and energy piece that can make a big enough difference. Royce O'Neal, the team's most physical presence, is entering free agency, and they might not even have the cap space to extend him. 
Never mind add on top of them. They'll likely have to scour the free agent market and find some cheap veteran help, but we can't imagine that the pieces available will give them the boost necessary to contend with some of the young up-and-coming teams in the West right now. On top of that, the Suns need a true point guard to orchestrate the offense. They thought that they could use Devin Booker in this role, but after watching the experiment for a year, it's clear that he shouldn't be burdened with both scoring and facilitating duties. A point guard who can get Durant and Booker the ball in the right spots is likely a necessity too. Without adding a player in this mold, it seems unlikely that the team can overcome their turnover woes so drastically that they could contend for a championship next season, and their big three are going to need to change their games and find more ways to get buckets in the half court, especially in the fourth quarter. More screens, more cuts, more off-ball movement, anything to create easier scoring opportunities and reduce those costly turnovers. Beyond roster reconstruction, it seems like the Suns also need a cultural makeover. For players with so much talent, the pushback they offered was quite frankly pathetic. We understand that not all players wear their emotions on their sleeves, and sometimes a focused, stoic approach serves best, but the Suns looked frustrated and lost. The Suns undoubtedly have a hell of a lot of work to do, and they better figure something out. Because after getting humiliated by the Wolves, their reputations are on the line. Billionaire owner Matt Ishbia looks more like Jerry Jones than Mark Cuban. And as he enters his mid-30s, Kevin Durant's time is running out to prove that he can lead a team to a championship without piggybacking on the Warriors. Next year will be gut check time in Phoenix, and our bets that they finish next season as a good, but nowhere near good enough team to win. But we want to know what you guys think. It's obvious the Suns need to make changes, but what do you guys think they should do? If they fire Vogel, who'd be a good replacement as their coach? And what players could they realistically bring on board that could right the ship? Let us know in the comments section, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more sports news and insights. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.